Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and welcome to F1 Manager 24. Back in F1 Manager 22, the initial release, I was able to take a couple of F2 drivers and win the championship within a handful of years from the weakest team on the grid. In F1 Manager 23, we started with the same weakest team on the grid, but I went for something a little more challenging with an all-female challenge. And within a few seasons, I was able to replace all but the final race seat with nothing but female staff and race pilots. Eventually, we made that change over to a full female lineup, and that ended up being the demise. The step up in difficulty level from F1 Manager 22 to 23, the AI was significantly tougher to outsmart. And so with a lower quality driver, similar to what we had in F1 Manager 22, we were unable to go out and secure wins the way I had in the previous edition. We were only just occasionally scoring points. And so that competitive imbalance made things uh, a lot tougher. But we're going to be at it again here in F1 Manager 24. And it turns out that not only do we have the wonderful edition of Create a Team, where we are going to be the 11th team on the grid, and I can make that team truly uh, a significantly lower level than anything we had in F1 Manager 23. Now, when you are selecting your staff and your drivers for that team, you're able to go in and choose not only from real life drivers and staff, but AI generated ones as well, including the opportunity to begin from day one an all female challenge, full staff and drivers. Formula One. A new season and a new dawn as a brand new team lines up on the grid. That means an even harder challenge to secure that coveted championship silverware as the on-track action is turned right up to 11. We're ready for excitement ahead as the teams return to the drawing board in the battle to end Red Bull's dominance. They'll need to balance their aspirations for high performance with the risk of pushing too far and inviting catastrophic failures out on the track. With many drivers on the last year of their contracts, team principals will need to ensure that they're kept in the right mindset across the whole season, as well as managing sponsor demands and protecting their most valuable assets from the prying eyes of their rivals. As a new competitor enters the fray, anything is possible. This is Formula One. Beginning with the bare minimum balance, facilities, and car performance, it turns out that you can still ratchet that up another level as you can customize the facilities and take all of these level ones and in some cases, turn them down to level zero. You can see others minimum is one, but we're gonna take everything to the lowest level we can possibly begin with and turn it down by five levels in addition to what they thought was the bare minimum. With the AI generated pool of staff and drivers, I've been able to fill every slot with a female. All of them ranging from a 75 overall to an 83 overall with each driver coming in just below an 80 overall, which means they're not gonna be terribly competitive in season one. But at 19 and 20 years of age, our two drivers can be competitive in time. Now, there's only one flaw in this system that I have discovered. The drivers of which are available to hire, let's say a Yuki Sonoda, for example, is a low 80s. There's a bunch of them in that range, and their cost is about six to seven million per season. These drivers are going to come in at about 16 or 17 million per year. So, we're going to be spending an additional 10 million per driver so an extra 20 million in salary and that's not because of these particular two drivers though they are more expensive than older drivers are but it's just scaled up for some reason the ai generated staff significantly over the real ones it's like they want you to take the real ones uh, or it's just a flaw in the system i'm not sure which Either way, uh, starting with an extra 20 million in salary means it's going to be that much harder to get the car development. But I think starting out with staff 
at this level across the board starting out with drivers at this level across the board though we are going to be behind the rest of the grid both in terms of competitiveness both in terms of facilities and in terms of drivers the driver part is not so significantly behind that it's going to be impossible for us to catch up which was the problem with f1 manager 23 we are 100 percent without a doubt starting behind everybody else on the grid and we will be fighting to not be last in this first season with financial difficulties it's going to be hard to develop the car but i do think that at a 79 and a 78 overall with our two drivers I think it's entirely possible that they will grow and develop into competitive racers that as we grow and develop the car into something competitive, which of course is going to require a lot of facility development as we're going to have a real hard time, especially when I turn things down and turned up our expenses by 20 million. It's going to be hard to be profitable at all in the early stages here and that is going to make the challenge be more about the growth and development of the car and we're going to be going as fast as we possibly can with our two young rookies with engine development locked these last few years nothing's changing when it comes to your powertrain selection Renault is slower than everybody else but very fuel efficient the honda red bull powertrain has the most power but it's the least durable it's costly to have that engine, even though it does make you go faster. Ferrari is fairly balanced, but it does have its durability concerns. Mercedes, a little bit slower. It's definitely off the pace of the Red Bull. It's just a hair off the pace of the Ferrari, but it is the most durable of all the engines. However, it's not very fuel efficient, so it does have two trade-offs but for us as finances are going to be a huge concern for quite some time we need the durability we need to be taking the engine that we begin the year with and not spending a penny more we need to hopefully avoid wrecks and destroyed engines along the way uh, we've got to rely on that durability element getting us through the year to be able to reinvest that 15 million or so that we can save to make up for the 20 million in the driver's cost with that introduction of difficulty this year we get it right from the start what i'm going to go for is the development side being the most difficult i want the race to be standard difficulty it is difficult enough on its own and of course we have so many extra handicaps from the very beginning of this series that making car development hard is going to be the biggest goal can we develop drivers and car to be competitive so standard difficulty for the race is enough of a challenge with everything else being the primary challenge that we're going for in this series this is one of those games where you can get lost in the editor for hours. And I have been lost in the editor for a good hour here, designing our race suit, helmet, livery for the car, and the logo for the team. For now, not sponsorship, sponsorship still pending. This is how she's gonna look at the start of the year. And one of the wonderful things about this game as it's not a one-time affair you can change it race by race you can change it season by season and we will have an evolving design at least each each season as we go through without bothering to go in any great detail uh, you can see where we fit on the grid that is car by car and as we have two cars on the grid Car number one is going to be placed, even though they're identical, ahead of car number two. So with 11 teams, that's 22. So we are last in top speed and right on down the board until you get to tire preservation, where we are 15th, still quite bad, definitely at the back of the grid. Same with engine cooling at 17th. Average on grid is these marks. I love that you get to see that, how far off of average you are. At the beginning of the year, most people would have said 
Alpine was last on the grid, but definitely since early development, Kixalver has been the last place team on the grid more often than not. Top speed, about half a kilometer an hour behind them. Uh, in terms of acceleration, one one hundredth behind them. This is head to head with the last place team. DRS effectiveness is four and a half percent behind. Low speed cornering is two one hundredths behind. Uh, one one hundredth in medium speed and just slightly behind in high speed cornering. So not too far off there. Uh, we're a full percentage and then some in dirty air tolerance. And as for tire preservation, 5% advantage compared to them. Engine cooling is just barely above them, 3 tenths of a percent. Total extra weight comes in the same. They're starting us off just 11 days before the season opener, so we do not have time to develop the car ahead of the first race. I can see all of our key staff members have just one year contracts. So we will need to get on with re-signing them soon. Uh, one of the things I was careful in selection is making sure that they are on the younger side so that we do not have to replace them anytime soon. We want to develop in-house as best we can. And as much as our car is dead last on the grid and needs rapid development, one, we don't have the facilities, or necessarily the staff for that matter, they're okay, but we don't really have the facilities to develop rapidly. But more importantly, we're not gonna have the finances to develop rapidly. We need to focus primarily on facility upgrades here in this first season. We are going to have the advantage of additional wind tunnel time, etc., to help us with car development. But what I'm gonna need to do in this first season to save money to invest in other places, and let's hope we're even just making enough money to be able to do this at all, as I don't yet know. My plan for car development in the first year is go all in, all wind tunnel time, everything, into one development at a time, per period. Just get massive gains out of the way. Now, by massive gains, it should be good gains because we're starting from way further behind everybody else and so and should have additional tunnel time so those two things should make it easier but with the facility limitations with the staff limitations it's only going to be so good and i really don't think it's going to make us competitive yet in the first season but that is the cost saving method we're going to need to go with uh, so that we could actually have the money to make things happen long term so with putting all of our hours, which is a lot by the way, putting all of them into the underfloor, you can see we can gain 10% on our 26% that we now sit on. That's, that is absolutely huge gains, but even then 26% plus 10 really isn't that much. But if we cut down on the lifespan a little, we can't afford to cut down on it much, but if we cut down on it a little, it's going to get a lot more out of that. You can see by shedding some weight, we're going to go from a 0 0.011 in high speed effectiveness, bringing it down by one race durability for the lifespan, and bringing that up to a 0 0.023, doubling what we're going to get and getting good low speed, medium speed cornering advantages out of out of this change. First facility upgrade is going to be the tour center, which is going to bring us a weekly income of 50000 and increase the team marketability. Cost is a quarter million for that. And while the helipad is going to do something similar, about a quarter million, team marketability also going up and attractiveness. Sponsor target payout increasing by 1%, meaning we're going to get more money from the sponsors, something we are desperate for. Leaving me with 1.5 million, it's going to be a stretch here, but I'm going to go ahead and do the 1 million for that underfloor upgrade. Introducing our driver pairing for foreseeably the entirety of this series, though it could change. Uh, we have Emma Beach, 21 years of age, uh, paired with Tempest Fletcher, who's 37, her race engineer. The race engineer in 83 overall, and Emma Beach is a 79 overall. Uh, taking a look here, personal situation neutral, team performance is neutral, 
our team principal. She has a negative opinion of me because she's unhappy with the car performance of our staff and our facilities. That's all going to be a long time to try to overcome. Her ratings, cornering a 79, breaking a 79, reactions a 77, so she's going to have decent pace, not far off from the other drivers on the grid. The car, however, will be a ways off. Consistency, accuracy, control, and smoothness are good. She's very level pegging. Uh, racecraft is also pretty good. Aggression is average, so she's not going to cause too many accidents. That makes me happy. Development rate comes in at high. I uh, think I want to kind of focus on things that are going to help her pace early on. You know, as she's balanced, we're going to keep it balanced, actually. It's a three-year contract for Emma Beach, so we're already locked in for the long term. In car number two, we have Leticia Rivas and Bernadette Roland, her paired uh, engineer. Roland, 32 years of age. Two-year contract for her, 80 overall. Rivas is a 78 overall, 20 years of age. She also has three years on her contract. A uh, very similar mentality right now as we come in. Very generic for everyone. None of them are happy with the level of facilities that we have uh, or the competitiveness of the car that we have. So kind of across the board, mentality is very similar for everyone. Rivas comes in a little bit lower, but very much the same sort of driver. Rivas, 75s, 76s for pace. A little more accurate for the consistency, but nothing below a 75, nothing above 79. She also has a high development rate. We will also go uh, just balanced for the time being for uh, each of them. Let's hope we don't get 20 points of adaptability before we get anything else. Her salary. 18 million so combined between them we're talking just shy of 40 million a year which is way higher than what the regular drivers make it's our first sponsor negotiation and we have a decision to make the funding comes in three ways guaranteed funding or potential funding delivered in either upfront money or potential funding through engagement with the sponsor and race day performance uh, granting additional. Now, this first sponsor comes in with a lot of money up front, 21 million, 21.7 million. With the additional, the engagement the race day brings in minimal additional funding. But performance reliance for those additional funds comes in on the low end. But if we're talking about upfront, and if you do all of the engagement, it's the engagement is off track kind of stuff. So you just have to commit to it, in theory, I would think. It shouldn't matter, I, I would think. The race day one is gonna matter on your performance. Performance reliance is low on this one, meaning there's a good chance that we can get a good chunk of that six million additional funding. The second one, which is also a one-star sponsor, comes in with very little money upfront just shy of 3 million. But with 27 million in, in engagement money, that combined amount is $30 million, where on the previous one, its combined amount is only 25 million. So we can get an additional 5 million. However, a lot of it's gonna come through engagement throughout the season. So it's gonna be more dependent on time being patient, getting paid out over the course of the season race by race. Meanwhile, the third one has a high performance reliance, a lot of race day bonuses that I just don't think we're going to hit targets on, right? We have low end car, low end driver pairing. My expectations for season one are extremely low. So even though this one also pays out 30 million in the upfront slash engagement side, and there's an additional 20 million out there, this this three-star sponsor, I, I just don't think it's something we're going to uh, do well with. I think being patient and going for the 30 million, even though that 5 million race day stuff might be harder to get, I think this is something that's going to uh, do the most for us. We get to choose additional sponsors, and there's facilities, staff, driver marketability things uh, that all play a factor 
in this next one so I'm going to go with our simple one star which adds almost a million and a half dollars in that up front but we get to choose up to five of these there's only five to choose from I suppose we're going to be choosing all five of them brings our overall sponsor funding to 10 million dollars up front engagement with sponsors will bring us up to potentially 40 million additional race day performance could bring in nearly 20 million uh, we're not going to hit all of that 60 million in fact i think we'll be lucky to get 40 million of that 60 million but the engagement stuff uh it's season one finances are going to be the biggest thing in season one not the driver development though of course we're going to do as much as we can with it not car development though we'll do as much as we can with it but it's going to be facility development uh, financial development in season one with an extra 10 million we immediately need to start reinvesting some of that into facilities including the helipad level one just finished so into level two with marketability attractiveness sponsor payouts going up one million for hospitality area four hundred and forty thousand for the memorabilia room which is going to importantly improve the mentality the team mindset and for the moment the last one i'm going to bother with at least at this stage is a race simulator weekly development 10 percent increase for our drivers to be competitive of course we're going to need those two to develop change my mind one more for now it's going to drop us just below seven million but eight hundred thousand for the team hub which is going to do the same thing for the staff help them develop help them develop but also the mentality piece i'm already liking how this change is coming about we now develop a sponsor plan on engagement the engagement requirement is going to be five thousand five hundred units whatever that may be to get a five million dollar payout during this period which is a six week plan to do that we have things like race day appearances driver performance rating will go down for Rivas if we put her into that one but that's going to give us a thousand engagement right there probably not a bad plan early on as i don't expect us to be very competitive in the early races we're certainly not going to be compete competing for points so we'll go ahead and put in a race day appearance and that's one and we can't repeat that again and again so now we need to come up with other options we have factory tour that's factory effectiveness down but again that one's not so bad looks like we might have a limit of six things to get our engagement up staff performance rating school events that's also a staff performance guided tours VIP activities seem to be what our sponsor cared about primarily. Let's go ahead and put that guided tour on. Interesting. Uh, we are not going to be able to maximize the engagement uh, as we go through this because we are just not good enough. So the maximum I can get, the maximum I can apply is six activities. And applying the best activities that we can manage still doesn't get us the engagement we need to maximize this and so we are already going to lose out on three million already in engagement just in this first period as we're coming up short and we're certainly not short by the margin but it's one of those things that kind of scales up apparently this is interesting uh, now as we develop facilities as we improve staff or drivers and their marketability and such this stuff gets easier to maximize f1 is back ladies and gentlemen and the grid is set to grow a new season is upon us as formula one returns to the middle east ready to kick things off here in bahrain but change is afoot the paddock has grown the grid extended yes that's right 11 teams 22 drivers and the hottest competition motorsport has to offer. And keep an eye out for a new face this weekend as we prepare to see a debutante take to the track. Okay then, let's get to it. First episode introductions. We've been through the ringer for a lot. I want to get straight to racing. We already know our car is slow, so we're going to bypass practice. We're going to bypass qualifying for this first race. They will come in time. We'll, we'll kind of shift in and out of using those elements. 
We're going to shift in and out of using race simulations to get to a stage where we are a competitive team. For now, let's get to our first race. You're witnessing a new chapter in Formula One as 11 teams line up on the grid. And plenty of people watching on will be keen to follow Fernando Alonso's progress. Being seventh on the grid gives them a good advantage. This is a great opportunity for points. This should certainly be a good one, folks. This is it. 22 cars on the grid. And it's lights out, and away we go. All right, we are underway. I have a feeling the audio might be a bit loud here. Um, let me know if it is problematic. It always varies on uh, what we get. But at the back of the grid, it's Xiao Quan Yu who started last. So we do begin ahead of him. And Rivas actually overtakes Gasly here at the beginning as our car makes its debut under the lights. But uh, we'll lose that position by turn number three. Actually, I think that's technically turn four. No point. No matter. So uh, we're pushing early on. It's going to cause us to overheat and use fuel, and we definitely have a negative on that fuel. Uh, engine temperature is going to be a bit of a factor this year that wasn't uh, taken into account last year. So we only want to push for a little while, and then we want to back off with that. Uh, I changed strap. Wow. Okay. Uh, game is not behaving a little different than it did last year. I made changes for qualifying and then went in and simulated and it didn't take my changes. Then I make changes for the race and it didn't uh, keep those changes either as I was trying to change strategy. I wanted Rivas on medium soft soft and then I was going to have each do soft medium soft. No matter, uh, we'll play this thing out. Uh, there is a new camera this year, I believe, as we get on to lap number two. So let's go ahead and cycle through and see what we have as our two drivers battle one another into uh, turn one. Okay. So we do have a secondary, we have kind of your, your TV cam. And then is this the helicopter cam? It's certainly zoomed out more than what we are used to. Okay, the onboard, the rear. The halo cam. Nose cam. Well we. And then the helmet cam. So yes, that this secondary is your your like helicopter cam now. That's the additional one this year. All right, uh, we're into lap three. Let's back off. Glad to see we did not burn through our ERS immediately. So Rivas settles in at 21st, Beach at 19th. Good start there. It's great to see us be a little bit competitive, even if back of the grid we are not so slow that we're getting left in the dust. We are already starting to see gaps open in the field with the Red Bulls out front, Ferraris chasing, McLarens behind that. Aston Martin ahead of Mercedes? Sure. When has that ever been a case this season in real life? No, don't think so. Uh, Red Bull, certainly no surprise to see them up there. Uh, Haas kind of picking up a best of the rest beyond those two. Uh, Williams... And we are battling at the back with Gasly, Joe, Botas. Uh, battling. Battling is good. Already a gap opening, though, with uh, Sargent off the back, Ocon off the back, uh, out of DRS range. For those new to the sport, if there are any out there, there certainly might be some. Uh, a brief overview. You have something called DRS, Drag Reduction System. Uh, we will see here in a moment 
fact, let's take a look at this one. See our rear wing there? See how it just opened a gap? There's a flap. If you are less than one second behind the car ahead of you, see these green zones on our uh, track map? There's a sector. There, there's a, uh, a detection point. If you are less than one second behind the car ahead of you, uh, which we are 19th and 20th, by the way, right now. If you are less than one second behind the car ahead of you at that detection point, when you hit the straightaway, this flap opens. Now, the rear wing creates drag. Drag allows you to corner. It gives you suction to the ground, allows you to corner more quickly. These cars corner insanely fast. But when you hit a straightaway, big long straight section like we're on right now, and you see that beach who we are riding with, flap did not open that time. Rivas came closing in real fast on us. That's because Rivas was less than a second behind where beach was more than a second behind, though we've closed back up on Botas for the time being. Anyway, back to the point here. On a straightaway, that drag that helps suck the car down slows it down you hit the wind flap opens you hit the wind less so with reduced drag you're able to go faster and so one of the key elements to good race pace is being less than a second ahead of the car ahead of you to keep that flap open but there's a trade-off when you follow another car closely you're in their wake you have disturbed air and you end up overheating your tires so it's bad for tire wear but it's good for pace and when you're slow like we are you got to kind of take the take the trade off and hope that you can keep up the pace but so far so good as we run 19th and 20th in this one absolutely competitive albeit at the back of the grid Field spread is definitely starting to occur. Leclerc has moved ahead of both Red Bulls. It's lap 8 of 57 on this one. We are at 73% on the tire wear, and you can see the expected degradation rate. Uh, we went a little bit deeper early on, but as we are kind of easing off now, you can see we're still suffering from overheating just a little bit as we are in the yellow. Red is where you want to avoid. It's going to wear your tires very quickly. Yellow is okay. It's warm. It's not great for your working temperature. You want to get that down to white. Uh, but you can see we're still having engine overheating and we are very light on fuel right now compared to where we need to be at the end of the race. But you can see how where we were 2.4 kilograms light already just running neutral has seen us go to 2.3 kilograms light as beach uh, moves ahead of Botas and into 18th position, uh, but is just outside of DRS range, and I think that might be why we were able to make that overtake as they battle back and forth. General running, just generic running, will in time conserve fuel. And so I started a lap of fuel light. We're going to have to make that up over the course of the race. Otherwise, we run out of fuel before the checkered flag. When you speed things up, I'm now at times four speed. I was running at times two speed there. That's generally how I like to play the game. Uh, real time, a little slow. You could do a lot more with things sped up. Even at times two, you have plenty of time to react uh, and, and carry out the actions. At times four, we convert from the 3D view to the 2D top-down view here. And you can really, from here, get a, a clean layout of what's going on in addition to times four speed times eight and time 16 help the game move really fast i don't want to move quite at time 16 right now but we will uh, progress a bit faster at times four speed for the moment now one of the big things again back for those who are new to the sport i will not do this race by race but for those of you who are new tire strategy is huge first off in a dry race you have to use two different compounds we have three different compounds in all now those compounds actually vary there's five of them in reality uh, but race by race there are three compounds there's soft medium and hard 
red walled, yellow walled, or a white walled tire. Now, the soft is the softest of those compounds. The rubber compound is the softest. It provides the most grip, but it wears the fastest. The medium is a balance where the hard is gonna last a lot longer, but it's gonna provide less grip. Now, less grip means slower. So you're gonna be slower on the hard compound, but it's gonna last longer, it's gonna last for more laps. Right now, our softs are already 15 laps in, down below 50%. Oh, Rivas just spun, Rivas just spun. That's our first mistake of the year, and that's gonna drop and her here, into last flag. place. That's also gonna see her go from 49% to, uh, to 43%, as it looks like, based on location there, uh, she got on the throttle a little too hard and uh, just as you're starting to ease onto to the see. throttle and it caused the uh, the spin there down to 20 seconds she'll be pinning a little bit earlier one you can see that that put a lot of heat into the tires causing them to overheat which is going to cause them to wear uh, but once you get below about 60 percent you're going to start losing pace once you then get below about 40%, you really start to lose more pace and you're going to be quite slow. So Rivas not only has just lost a lot of time seeing herself down in 20 seconds, she's going to lose a lot more rapidly right now compared to everybody else's. Well, she's only about 5% worse off. It, it wasn't a significant spin. There was no big lockup in there, but that still took some life out of the tires. Uh, and it's going to force us into a little bit earlier pit. I think we will also end up flipping our strategy. I will go to the mediums and run long, especially now that she's out here by herself. Uh, Beach, meanwhile, is hanging on right there with Botas, still 19th. We've kind of exchanged positions there a number of times. She's still looking competitive for the time being, which is definitely helpful. But Rivas has very much messed up her day. And we are just into our pit window. So our pit window is opening. The window is, is a handful of laps between here and there that you are expected to pit anywhere within that window. It doesn't always have to be the exact lap. Just as I was saying with, with Rivas, I think Rivas is going to be pitting sooner rather than later. She has cooled back, uh, cooled down those tires again. Ocon just pit and comes out just behind Rivas. That's how much ground we lost. Uh, Ocon was ahead of... Uh, of beach but not by much not that far ahead maybe four or five seconds ahead but Rivas lost so much ground that she went from I think she was 20th at the time I think Gasly had gotten back ahead of us and on a fresh set Ocon uh, fresh set of that's the yellow wall so that's the medium compound uh, that's the neutral one brand new tires are always going to be faster though than slow tires so medium Brand new mediums are going to be faster than used softs. Oh, wow, that was close. No, no accident. Okay, sure. Sure. Uh, <laughs> that was, uh, that was Botas. That was Botas pitting and coming out. So what did we just say about Beach and, and Bota, Botas? Well, there you go. 34%. Uh, you know, I, I think it's time. We're, we're two laps early, but we don't have much of a choice. Like I said, we're going to switch it up and go to the uh, mediums instead of the softs. All right, and down pit road for the very first time this year. I'm assuming our pit crew is going to be on the weaker side. Uh, let's see, what is our pit time like? 2.738 seconds. That is pretty slow for a pit stop. That is pretty slow, but not terrible better than uh, kick Salber. Maybe two? That's going to be an undercut. Fresh compound, right? So Beach has delayed a little bit, which means you have more tire life, but undercuts are a real thing. Overcuts are a thing too. We'll, we'll talk more about that kind of strategy later on, but that is a mistake. That is a mistake, and it's a 3.633, so our pit crew, right on its second Lucas attempt, has the made a mistake on their pit stop, and it's the front left. 
Hang on, what's happening here? They I'm not sure what the mistake on. was. So Beach just missed out. Comes out eight seconds behind Botas. Now the mistake only cost us one second. The undercut in what one lap, two laps? Was that that much? So we've had one driver mistake here in this first race, and now we've also had one team mistake in this first race. Both quite costly, but at least Beach is still competitive. Uh, she's definitely not up with Botas where we had been before, but uh, she remains at least ahead of Gasly and Joe, though Gasly with the RS has gone around. And Beach somehow messed it up so bad on the overtake that we instantly lost two seconds and in, and then are overtaken by beach so uh by joe so beach is really off the pace right now crash first crash of the year first crash of the year crash. multiple cars it is not a solo mistake it's hamilton and in rb it's either sonoda or ricardo and they barely touch they barely touched. That was right rear, left front. Local yellow is all, and we are already back to full green. If there was damage, it would have been to the... Uh, it was Sonoda. It would have been to the wing of Sonoda. Racing incident, right call. We now have had the first pit stop of the entire grid. So everybody now continuing on. Uh, checking in last lap times. We're looking at 135s. 137s at the front of the grid and then 138s and 139s at the back and Rivas is a 141 right now so she's really off the pace uh, that's not it's not looking good for either of us so Beach kept up kept up well on that first stint but we are now facing uh, quite the dilemma on our hands where she just does not have pace we saw that we were 8 seconds behind Botas and that's grown into 11. Uh, Joe, at least, looks like Joe made a mistake and fell off. Joe's six seconds behind Beach. So right now, he's competing for not last place and beating one car out there. Uh, I'll take it, but Rivas at half a minute behind and a lap down. Uh, that's what happened to Joe. Joe's a lap down, uh, and Beach just got lapped. Beach just got lapped by Verstappen. So Verstappen goes around. The six second gap. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we let three cars through, and all of a sudden it's back down to three seconds. So, three seconds. There is Joe. That is Beach up ahead. 15 seconds to signs, though. So, nice big healthy gap there. But we've been lapped on our very first race 31 to 57 laps. We are very much off the pace compared to the front runners. So from here on out, the big thing to keep an eye on is can we hold off Joe? We're at 64%. Uh, Joe is already going to be well below that, and that advantage is starting to play out there. It would be nice if we can get back towards Gasly as we have a slight advantage, but it looks like we're very much still going the wrong direction as the uh, three-second gap has gone out to six, and Joe has caught back up to uh, Beach. Yeah, we're entering our pit window now definitely a bit early let's go aggressive um show caught and overtook us very quickly there and as we catch up we start to overheat uh oh red flag and it's us so telling beach to push has eliminated her let's have a look at the action. from the, final the race With not much we're room trying to, to overtake up the inside that was pretty Just risky. As... That will have knocked their Why is that a red I'm flag? Sure. Broke the suspension, I suppose. Oh. It's not going the way the team had hoped today. So Beach retires. We have a red flag. This is going to bring Rivas back into the race, which is good. We're set once more. And soon we'll continue this race. So we have a restart here. We're going to pick it up. And with just 18 laps, I, I want to push. We have tons of fuel now. Uh, let's go ahead and deploy. I don't want to burn these tires up, though. You can see that they are just going to make it to the end of the race. And there's an incident. 
Nope, that's... Okay, no penalties given on that one, but there is an incident. There is an incident here. Rivas has overtaken show, but I'm something sure happened ahead happened of us. There. So things got a little tight into turn one, and the Haas... Looks like he comes across Botas on that one. That was Magnuson. Finished 20th in our first race. Not the way we planned it. Not Beach, who looked like she was poised to finish 20th. Uh, Rivas half a minute behind and a lap down is back on the lead lap. Now, some of the cars have already used up their soft, so half the grid is on mediums here. We cannot push too long. Uh, in fact, let's already drop back down to standard here. Push back out a little bit. DRS is open. It's going to help us close back down. We had gotten just outside of a second, but it was after the detection as the flap opened, and we were able to close it back to uh, six tenths behind. We've left Joe behind. Joe is two and a half seconds down, so this is fantastic for our race. In fact, as we push on, we're going to go up the inside of Gasly. Rivas is having a hard time keeping up with Gasly even pushing and using up that that fuel but uh it looks like we're officially out of uh, drs range so now it's a race between us and uh and joe for that 20th position uh we're gonna go ahead and go balanced even though we have that spare fuel at this point we're just gonna go neutral and try to see this race out as the laps tick by we fall further and further off three seconds behind but joe is not gaining uh, we're just fractionally faster than joe 20th I'm actually gonna be okay with a 20th place finish in our first race so in the first race of the season Carlos Sainz of Ferrari has won the race ahead of Max Verstappen and Lando Norris rounding out the podium and it's a 20th place finish in our first race on the old grid 20th is last but on the new grid with two more cars we finish ahead of a single driver uh, Disappointing for Beach to crash out in the first race. Uh, in all likelihood, there should be little to no damage in the areas that count. The engine, the gearbox, all should be fine. It was a left front suspension that I suspect was the cause of her DNF probably breaking. And therefore, uh, being the only thing that we're going to need to replace on this one, the inner front wing seemed fine, though reality real you know, world uh, if that suspension arm breaks it very well could make contact with the wing so maybe a front wing to replace as well all right folks well that's going to do it for this very first episode of this f1 manager 24 let's play the all-female challenge is well and truly on from the get-go which is absolutely exciting you know what that challenge is. It's going to be developing the car. It's going to be developing those drivers. Sometimes I think you just have to accept that it's not going to be your race. Their first win of the season. And the I'm pretty excited by what we're sure. set to see here with the changes for F1 Manager 24. With about 100 episodes in each of the last two editions, this is set to be a very much long Let's Play series. So please take a moment. Help me out with the algorithm as I do still have a smaller channel. There are so many larger channels. There are larger channels that don't even do the F1 game more than a month of the year. And they got liveries designed after them. So I'm trying to compete with that. They're not doing 100 episodes. You're going to be lucky to see 20 out of them. Do me a favor. Help me out. Click that like button. Leave a comment to help with the algorithm on this one. And I'll see you back soon for the next one. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.